Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. I want to do a recap of our brief morning tornado over the weekend. Saturday morning, many of you woke up in northern Mecklenburg, southern Iredell, into Rowan County with a tornado warning. And it was an interesting little storm. It certainly did produce a tornado. The National Weather Service detected that there was damage that occurred near the Davidson College Lakefront campus. So it started over Lake Norman, uh, moved east, and then crossed I-77, moved through the Mount Moore Air, Mount Morn area, and then pushed off to the north and east. Most of the damage was primarily trees. There was very little structure damage until you got to areas uh, near that lakefront area where we did have some picnic tables kind of blown over. Um, the tornado developed around 7.27 a.m. right on the lake campus of Davidson College. Picnic tables were blown over, some big hardwood trees, numerous uh, reports of um, you know, trees down in that area. And that was the primary thing we saw. Thankfully, no structure damage was reported. EF0, which means it had winds of about 80 miles per hour. Let's look back at the radar on how this started. So we're going back to 7.01 a.m. You know, we had this line of storms moving through the area. We did have severe thunderstorm warnings um, at this time. But I want to go back over Lincoln County because this is where things actually, to me, looked like we started to see some development going on. Right around Lincolnton in 321, you could see on the left, this is reflectivity right as a velocity data. We got this little knob on the line. See that little knob? This is kind of when we see these QLCS or these squiggly line uh, tornado spin-ups. This is kind of what we see. Now watch this. I'm going to go slowly frame by frame here as it pushes east. You could still see around 73. I'm heading into eastern Lincoln County. This is heading towards Denver right now. There's still that little knob right there, um, you know, south of Pumpkin Center, northeast of Iron Station. Again, doesn't look like it's doing anything right here, but this is what we often see the precursors to tornadoes in this line. We'll go a little bit further. I'm going to stop this as it crosses Denver on 16. Still doesn't look like it's doing much other than producing straight line winds. And again, there was a severe thunderstorm warning in effect. Remember, oftentimes severe thunderstorm warnings can and do produce tornadoes with little or no warnings. If you're under severe thunderstorm warning, you shouldn't be shocked that a tornado does develop. It, there's a warning for it. It's more shocking to see no warnings at all and then a tornado pop up. So that was not the case in this situation. You could see as it pushes to the north and east. Now there's a void in the radar data and people often ask, this is the terminal Doppler radar. Um, there's a communication tower here, which uh, they block the signal for. So we lose radar data briefly as it moves over the western part of Lake Norman. Um, but as it reemerges from the lake, you'll see it moving into southwestern uh, Rowan, or excuse me, southwestern Iredell County, right here. You see this area right here, right around Brawley School Road. This is clearly where we've got something going on. Again, this is on the west side of the lake right here. Okay, it crosses the lake and starts to spin up. It's heading towards Langtree, and right here we clearly have something west of Langtree, and this is actually about the time it touches down, 7.26 a.m. You can see we've got strong winds going this way, strong winds going this way, even having a little appendage here. So this is probably a water spout over Lake Norman. If anybody was up early boating, they might have run into it. You see the next frame over Langtree, definitely, definitely that's where I saw the rotation. I was like, there's something there. As it pushes east towards Mount Morn, it looks weaker on the radar, but we know it's still on the ground. The radar just isn't detecting it very well. As it pushes east, there's still a, a surge of wind. But what's different about this is the winds are primarily all in this direction. We're not getting a bunch of wraparound. So at the very least, you know you got 70, 80 mile an hour winds. And that's why even though the tornado warning's still up, you can't see strong rotation. There's still strong winds there. And if you back up a little bit here, you can kind of see that rotation there. Then it pushes off to the northeast. This is 723. We go to 734. There's still strong rotation right there. In my opinion, that's a pretty good little couplet right there. Heads towards the Rowan County line. I still see some type of rotation right about there as it's pushing towards the Rowan County line, southeast side of, of you know, Mooresville here at this situation. Let's loop this one more time. I'm going to stop it here. Oh, it backed up to the right there. There it goes. And then it moves into Rowan County and then it kind of falls apart. So let's go back. And this is a one hour loop, 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. You can kind of see the evolution of this line of storms and that quick, quick spin up tornado. The void in the radar data was not helpful at all. That's for sure. Uh, the only good news is it was over the lake. So uh, it would only have been affecting a boater if there was somebody there. Um, it definitely formed over the lake. And to me right here, that right there is the is the strongest indication of a tornado on the radar right there 
and that's just west of Langtree. So that was the tornado warning. Again, we'll go back. That was, here is the look at the track. And again, Langtree's right there, crosses I-77, EF0, max winds of 80 miles per hour at 7.27 a.m. on Saturday morning.